Welcome back everyone to more Transport Fever 2. In today's video, I want to take a little bit more in-depth look at emissions and more specifically in their role in the growth of cities and also some different tactics that you can use to maybe work around emissions and get your emissions lower where they need to be in order to help the growth of your cities. So to start off with, you see on your screen that we are currently in the industrial district of one of our cities and while we're still very early in the gameplay, we're still at 1917. So we haven't even unlocked aircraft yet at this point and some of the more advanced uh, machines that we'll be using for transport later in the game. But already, emissions have become an issue that I'm having to deal with in the game. So as we zoom out a little bit, let's go ahead and back our camera up. You can see, I wanna first show you the map a little bit. So we've got a total of five cities here on the map, three at the very bottom and then a couple more uh, here closer to the top. So Charleston, and then finally in the very top left corner is New York City. And as I mentioned, we're at the year 1917 and emissions have become uh, a bit of an issue. So let's first take a look at our overlays and we're gonna come all the way down toward the bottom and do the emissions layer. And here you see uh, the reddish tint is gonna show us where the emissions are higher. And so if we zoom in on Reno, the areas that we do not want higher emissions are the residential areas. So you see these as the darker shaded areas. The darker red uh, shading that we have over these areas, the worse the emissions is for the city overall and the slower the growth will be. And we'll take a look at how you can determine that here in just a moment. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to minimize the amount of emissions at the residential neighborhoods. Also, if you take a look in the top left-hand corner, you'll see not only the emissions layer, not only that, but you'll see emission at mouse cursor, which is at the bottom of that pop-up window. And here you can notice that if we move away from the city a little bit, we're down into the mid forties. But if I come back into the main part of the city, we get up around the mid seventies. So what are some things that we can do uh, to lower that? And how much do we need to lower it to really be effective? Well, from the mid-70s right now, you can see that that's coming from a lot of uh, bus-type traffic that I've run got running through the city. And also, I have uh, some cargo that is coming into the city that's running along that route, running right through the center of the city that is really creating the issue for us. So the first thing we can do with that is we can look at what vehicles we might be able to use to lower that emissions. And in order to do that, first let's turn off our layer and we're gonna come into the road depot and just click on buy vehicles. So again, at 1917, 1918 in the game, this is what we have available. So let's just start from the very top. So if we're using horse-drawn carriages, we have an emission level of 61. Well, that's really not gonna cause much of an issue for us, but right now we're at 75. So we must be using some different vehicles that have much more emissions to them. One of my favorites to swap over to as the game moves on is our first steam truck. And immediately you can see we're at a 77 emission. So that is a good bit higher. So when you're thinking about replacing vehicles, consider the fact that you're gonna be going early in the game from something like 61 to 77. So a huge jump there in emissions. But then if we come to the Benz truck that gets unlocked around 1912, that emission number drops to 70. And then if we get back down to uh, the Mack truck, we're back up to 76. So you've got some decisions to make as time rolls on. Now, of course, as large amounts of time pass, eventually you will no longer be able to use some of these earlier vehicles and you'll have to move on uh, and think about some different ways uh, to lower and control your emissions. But one way you can is by controlling which vehicles you're actually using by keeping track of their emission levels. Also, along with that, uh, as we took a look at in the previous video, the longer you keep these vehicles, particularly past their lifespan, these emission numbers go up anywhere from seven to nine percent is what I've noticed so far, unless you make some adjustments to uh, let's actually come in and take a look at one of these. So if we take a look at road vehicle 
and then we come into configure maintenance. Right now we're at normal. And honestly, I have not seen a reason to change that. But if you decided to change that to high or very high, you drastically increase your running costs either 25 to 50 percent, which is a huge deal, uh, particularly if you're playing on the higher difficulty levels. But in addition to that, it brings those emissions back down, particularly if you're in very high, it'll bring the emissions back down to that of what a new vehicle would be. But if we come into Road Vehicle 56, which is going to be one of our steam trucks, and we see that we're 16 years in and our emissions are, well, I just went right by it, 81. So very high here. So above, I believe it was 77 brand new. So we have, yeah, there we go. Finally get the pop up in there. So we're in bad condition. So we could drop four emission points just by increasing this maintenance. So again, just giving you another option for controlling your emissions. So already we've seen two options directly related to using road vehicles. One is to determine the type of road vehicle based on the emissions that it has. The second is to adjust the maintenance. But there is a third way, which is to change the type of transport that you're using altogether. Now in Reno, we're using exclusively road vehicles right now. There are no trains in the area. But if we come down to another city, here you can see we have a train line going in to Omaha. So previously, I was doing this very same route, but instead of the train, I was using road depots and moving the cargo back and forth uh, using the road vehicles. Now, all of the road vehicles I'm using are to get uh, from the farm over to um, our train stop well outside of this area around the city itself. So if we come back in, change the emissions layer, you can see that the heavy emissions both from the train as well as from these vehicles are well away from this area over here in the residential area. There we go. There's our first airplane that just come in at 1920. So that will give us another option in the future. The plane emissions will be even different than what we're looking at for the train. So giving you yet another option. And here you can see we're still pretty far outside of the city itself as it continues to grow. But in the future, that's something that we'll have to take a look at as well. But for right now, I have done, I think, a pretty good job of removing most of the emissions from the center of the city. Here you can see we still have some bus traffic that's coming through, but it is not near at the emission level as what we were looking at earlier. Here, as we mouse uh, around the center part of the city, we're only in the low to mid 60s as opposed to the mid to upper 70s that we were looking at earlier in the other city. So those are a few ways to determine uh, your emissions levels and also some adjustments that you can make in the game uh, to how you're transporting goods and people in order to manage that. But let's take a look at one more screen that I want to show you guys, which is the town statistics. This is where you're going to get down deep and see actually what effect the high, low, or medium level emissions are going to have on your cities and the growth of those cities. Here under town statistics, which again is in the bottom right hand corner, we notice that our growth is still doing really good. Now it could be optimized even more, but it's still doing really good. And at some point, uh, at least at this point in the game, you'll stop all the growth in the cities once they reach a certain level uh, based on where they started from. So the starting population will affect the end population. And at some point your cities will stop growing, even if you have really good numbers. So on the emission side of things, you can see we've got uh, Reno is poor. Reno is actually the very first city we were taking a look at. Let's back out a little bit. There it is. Reno is the city we were looking at with so much traffic uh, on the roads around the residential area. And you can see that has created a poor situation with the emissions. But Omaha, on the other hand, is very different. And that's the second city we were looking at where most of our traffic is managed through the railway. So we have a very different emission situation there as opposed to Reno. So a, a very good uh, contrast for you on those two. But now let's come into Omaha itself. So we're going to simply click on 
the town name. And as we get into uh, the pop-up, under quality, we're going to have a mission level. So right now it's at good. And even at good, we're still at minus 10%. So what you have in determining the growth of a city is you have all of these percentages depending upon the supply of goods and the movement of people that you're able to uh, take care of within the city. And right now you can see that with all of the goods and people that we're moving throughout the city, it is more than taking up uh, for what we're doing in uh, emissions, even though that's a negative number. So I'm not terribly worried about it. I don't have a huge reason to uh, come in and make drastic changes because we're doing just fine, at least for this portion of the game. But obviously that's something that I want to come back to uh, as time moves on. Let's come back over to Reno. And here we see that we are very poor. Very poor is a minus 40%. So obviously that is a huge effect on our growth. And there you can see minus 86 residents is what that wants to take away. But for right now, overall, we're still at plus 80 because we have all of these other options taking care of us. We are producing at least one of the supplies, which is the tools, and that is more than making up for our difference in emissions. So again, the goal of today's video was to show you how emissions affect your cities and also give you a few ideas on how you can adjust which vehicles you're using or whether or not you're swapping to trains, maybe even uh, using the waterways for some ships and so on to control the amount of emissions and therefore control the growth of your cities. That's going to do it for today. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more Transport Fever 2.